I'm Dr. David Perlmutter here. Welcome again to The Empowering Neurologist. About a year ago, I was at a conference and people were uh, all talking about this ring that they were wearing that was giving them information about their physical activity and more importantly about their sleep. We know there's a lot of wearable devices out there, certainly become very popular, but I was very fascinated with what was called, is called the Aura Ring, O-U-R-A Ring. Uh, so my wife and I ended up buying a, an Aura Ring. Here's what it looks like. Doesn't look like anything exciting. But interestingly, you'll notice that there are some uh, transducers uh, within the ring itself that sends information uh, that is then uploaded to your smartphone. Um, what we've been using the Aura Ring for has been mostly to evaluate the length, uh, duration, and quality of our sleep. Uh, I wanted to learn more about the Aura Ring, so I decided I would reach out to the CEO, the creator of the device, uh, Peter Latella and he is the subject of our interview today. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He is the CEO of Aura and uh, uh, the co-founder as well. Uh, he is what we call a serial entrepreneur. He's been involved in this uh, sort of idea over the past 20 years, uh, creating and marketing high-tech products, as well as, in this case, building an international business, uh, along with other international businesses. Aura, the Aura Ring, brings together his passion uh, for developing products for real human well-being, uh, understanding physiology and creating products that do good and products that people love. Aura is the world's first wellness ring. It combines uh, obviously style and comfort. You don't really know you're wearing it along with an incredible level of technology that we are going to explore today. Technology that has been uh, three years in the making. So Let's just jump in and say hello. Well, hi, Pateri. Really uh, glad to have this opportunity to chat with you today. Great to meet you here. Thanks for the invitation, Doctor. Um, I, as I mentioned during the intro, uh, we learned about the Aura Ring uh, a year ago. We ended up, my wife and I, buying them. And then we've had really some interesting experiences with them. I'd like first to take our viewers back to a time when uh, either the light bulb went off in your brain or somebody's brain that this might be a cool thing to create. How did that all get started? Yeah, so there are several themes that that uh, kind of are in the core essence of creating this kind of a product. One of them is is my own background in creating IT systems for chronic diseases uh, prevention and management, in which context I, I learned that how this current healthcare system is not very capable of helping people to prevent the onset of chronic diseases. And the other theme comes from um, being in international business for more than 20 years. Uh, we have seen so many people burning out in their work and not kind of being capable of, of leveraging their full potential to, to live up their dreams. So, so that's another kind of theme, which actually they both support each other. So we wanted to de develop something that would help people understand that how their body is responding to their lifestyle so that they could find daily choices and, and develop habits that would help them to really leverage their full mental, physical and emotional potential to live up their dreams, to kind of unleash their full potential. So those were the themes for us to, to start developing the solution. Um, so we wanted to develop something that uh, integrates to daily life of uh, each individual. And, and then it's a tool that helps you to reflect, self-reflect that what's happening in my body how my body is responding to whatever choices I do during the day. And we figured out that, that the measurement during the night, not only the sleep quality measurement, but also the body responses, they reflect to us that how my daily choices affected my sleep and the restorativeness of my sleep and, and what other things we can derive from that, those insights. 
So, well, you know, I would say that the ring uh, obviously gives inf information about your daily activity as well, your, you know, how active you are, et cetera. Yes. But what did you do just now? You focused uh, on your opening statement here on the importance of sleep. Yes. And I really would love to explore that because it's so underrated in our modern society. In fact, yes. it's almost derogated to the uh, coming into, uh, I think, conflict with our sense of being creative and being productive, that people think the less sleep, the better. I'm going to stay up late, get up early and really, you know, hit it hard. But uh, I think we're seeing a real uh, revolution in our uh, understanding of the uh, importance of sleep. And I think Dr. Matthew Walker is also accredited, I think, with helping to bring about this incredible new level of understanding and appreciation as to its value. And uh, as I said in my introduction, uh, getting this information about my own personal sleep has been extremely important and helpful because, as you say, as you just mentioned, uh, so important that I can then modify certain of my lifestyle choices and see what immediately the next that night see what uh, what effect that has on on sleep in this case. So you really did. It looks like you really spent a lot of time and dedication targeting specifically sleep. Why did you do that? Yeah. So um, what I found out when working in the context of chronic diseases and and especially trying to figure out the the, the actual reasons why people develop chronic diseases? What's, what are the reasons for the onset of a dis disease? So pretty common theme was that the different stressors of, of life, they kind of uh, caused uh, this kind of prolonged uh, state of, of uh, imbalance, in the, especially in the autonomic nervous system. So, uh, and then depending on the individual and their their own, of course, genotype, phenotype, chronotype, and so on, the body reacted in different ways. So some of them started to develop chronic disease. Some of them uh, reacted in other ways with depression or, or some other ways. In any case, um, those stressors that each, each one of us have in our life, um, we started to look them from the perspective of recovery so how we can help people understand what are the actions that you could take to ensure full recovery from those uh, stressors that you are experiencing in your life and and uh, of course from the perspective of recovery uh, sleep is one of the core factors there so so we had to get access to the data during the night, understand in high accuracy and in a very comfortable, non-intrusive way as a longitudinal uh, perspective that how, how, um, how you sleep and, and what kind of patterns you have in your sleep and also even going deep into the biology to understand that how you are, how well you are in, in sync with your chronotype and the timing of your sleep and waking up and how consistent it is. So going to the root causes that, that affect sleep and the restorativeness of sleep. So all that comes from, from this kind of recovery process uh, of the stressors, both short-term and long-term. Well, it's interesting then that uh, you know, you're really characterizing sleep as a recovery modality, you know, allowing us then to be able to tolerate the various uh, uh, influences stressors, if you will, during the course of the day. We know that one of the benefits of sleep, uh, sleep that was only recently described uh, by researchers at the University of Rochester is the activation of what's called the glymphatic system. And yes. that is the um, a system within the brain uh, that allows itself uh, to purge itself of toxins, if you will. Exactly. And I wonder if you could walk through uh, when uh, in the course of sleep that occurs and why it's important. Yeah, it's, 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 it's great that you mentioned that because actually here in, in Oulu, where our company comes, uh, in the University Hospital of Oulu, they've been doing this same research at the same time. And actually they have co-written those articles related to the glymphatic system. So 
our rings are being used in that research. And that exactly kind of describes our um, intent and, and willingness to be in deep understanding of the actual restorativeness of sleep. And actually what we found out is that uh, there is some synchronization between sleep stages and glymphatic circulation or kind of effectiveness of this system. But also what was even more meaningful for me was that the revolution of the finding that HRV, the heart rate variability, plays an important role there because as we know there is no lymphatic system like in, in elsewhere in the body but this lymphatic circulation is actually the the uh, the movement of the uh, liquid between the brain mass it's it's modulated by heart rate breathing rate and hrv is is a kind of modulator that brings this kind of randomness into that uh, cleansing process in the brain so uh, as mentioned in those articles the brain mass actually shrinks up to even even 60 percent so there is more space for this cleansing mechanism to happen and then then it this movement of the of the this liquid in between it becomes important from this cleansing mechanism perspective and for me it was very meaningful finding that hrv plays so important role in that and this typically occurs during deep sleep non-rem yes that's that's the current understanding but but as we know this sleep staging is is a pretty old uh, kind of uh, mechanism to understand sleep so I even some some papers they they say that there are at least 20 21 different stages of sleep so so um um, I wouldn't directly put them in, in this kind of a current uh, sleep staging of deep sleep, REM sleep, light sleep uh, connotation because there seems to be much more happening and we are not yet there to really understand that how these different stages actually, what they indicate and how in relation to the breathing pattern, uh, your heart rate pattern, your HRV pattern, uh, together with all those other signals that we can get uh, from EEG, EOG, and so on. So how they actually sync and what they eventually tell about the, the actual lymphatic system effectiveness and, and therefore the restorativeness of sleep. I'd like to get back, if I could, to the notion that understanding this, uh, where a person is, and getting this information allows that individual to make changes. And, you know, you indicated that uh, the impetus for this was looking at what's going on globally in terms of chronic degenerative conditions, yeah. which the World Health Organization ranks as the number one cause of death on the planet. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we in, in our world, are concerned that it may be here in America that the number three cause of death after coronary uh, artery mm. disease, cancer, is uh, Alzheimer's disease. But, you know... Mm. In, in many regards, these three things are all lifestyle related. Yes. Uh, certainly coronary artery disease and Alzheimer's have a strong relationship to um, inflammation, but mm. also have a, a strong relationship along with diabetes to non-restorative sleep. Uh, but yes. to get back to you know, the idea that having this uh, information available via the Aura Ring technology allows people to make changes. So I was, uh, I have been surprised at times uh, to note that uh, if indeed there is some activation of the lymphatic system during deep non-REM sleep, uh, let's take a look first at uh, this first image. And uh, this, this is, uh, I sent you from my iPhone uh, yes. a screenshot of a, a particular night of my, my sleep. And what can you tell us about this, uh, this, what would you learn from this data? It looks like my deep sleep, which generally in most people occurs early on in, the, in their sleep cycle, uh, yes. uh, is, um, is not as good as it perhaps could be. Hmm. Yes. 20 minutes of deep sleep and, and one, one hour, 26 minutes of REM sleep for that night. And total sleep time, seven hours, eight minutes. 
efficiency 92 percent and there seems to be latency of 18 minutes so it's it's pretty it, it took a while for you to fall asleep i can see that there is some delay in getting to the deep sleep so so there may be some some uh, jet lag or or something that is still affecting or something else uh, is normally uh, normally the 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 majority of the deep sleep comes pretty soon after we fall asleep so well, there's something to do with the circadian alignment there that what is your optimal bedtime typically and, and um my latency is about three or four minutes so yeah yeah what i'm going to tell you a little bit about that one night that that our, our viewers just saw and i was up a little later than i should have been and mm. even worse than that i was finishing uh a putting together a keynote presentation. So I was on the computer and mm. made the mistake of not having the, uh, the amber light on uh, the yeah. mode on the computer. Yeah. And yeah. Yes. Uh, did it affect me? It looks like it did. And yes. the following night, I didn't do any work on the computer. Mm. Uh, yeah. I read with natural light, uh, a rather yes. incandescent light for a little while, yes. but yes. I put it away and I went to bed earlier. So let's have yeah. a look at that image and then tell yeah. us what you see as a difference. Yes, there is a big difference um, there. So, so definitely, what you described, it has had at least two effects. So, the melatonin secretion hasn't been that effective, and also that you have kind of uh, lost this first part of deep sleep. So it's because, as we know, in our body, we have a kind of intrinsic memory. So that if you keep consistent bedtimes and consistent wake up times then your body starts to learn that, okay, this is the time for me to go to the deep sleep. And if you kind of lose that that window, then you lose the chance to get the amount that you otherwise would get. So that's why the co consistency in bedtimes is so important. And, well, and so To me, it was very important. And uh, having a family history of Alzheimer's disease and knowing that uh, one of the things in terms of uh, function of the glymphatic system uh, is helping reduce beta amyloid. I think, again, mm. Dr. Matthew Walker has talked about that and demonstrated that in the mm. cerebrospinal fluid of individuals who were sleep deprived, a yeah. dramatic increase uh, level of amyloid, and I think perhaps phosphorylated tau that I'm not sure. But mm. nonetheless, these abnormal folded proteins that are associated at least uh, with Alzheimer's disease. So, you know, my mm. mission my own life, uh, hmm. not mentioning just my outreach, of course, hmm. uh, for my own self is to do what I can to reduce my risk of Alzheimer's. Certainly offloading the beta amyloid risk factor hmm. is important, hence the need to make sure I get enough of that uh, deep uh, sleep because it's related to the glymphatic system. So exactly what I did that night again was uh, so I made changes the very next night, and uh, hmm. at, which I just described. And hmm. with the use of the aura ring, I was able to see that my changes had an impact. You yes. know, so often we, we make changes in our lifestyle and, well, we're starting to take this nutritional supplement, we're adding in whatever it may be and hoping just based on what we read that that's going to do some good. Yes. But I think that what we really need, and you have hit upon it uh, from the beginning of our conversation, we need the feedback uh, in terms of what we're doing and it's so reinforcing to get that feedback. And I want to just say one other thing and, and hope that you'll comment on it. We live in a time uh, that we're seeing these positive feedback loops. And what I mean by that is when we don't sleep, our decision-making ability is compromised, number one. Number two, blood sugars are elevated. Number three, uh, we uh, gain weight. And all of those things then feedback, no pun intended, to compromise our sleep, and we get into this vicious cycle where we're not sleeping well, where bl our blood sugars are going up, we're gaining weight, and again, we're not sleeping well, so it gets worse and worse with time. And I think that's really kind of fundamental as it relates to inflammation, and it relates to some of the, you know, the most uh, common causes of death on planet Earth. So uh, again, I, you know, I'm praising you here for calling it out and giving people a powerful tool to get to know uh, what you know what is the momentary influence of these lifestyle uh, decisions that they're making in terms of how did you sleep last night, and then you know raising our awareness as to why that's important. 
you've been uh, talking about hypnograms, and I think we have. I think I sent you uh, an image of one of my hypnograms. What yes. can you tell us about that? Yeah. So, so the hypnogram is is one of the ways to describe exactly those sleep states. that how much deep sleep, REM sleep, light sleep, and how much wakefulness there is during the night. So, during the time you are in, in bed. So there are multiple different um, parameters, uh, or so-called contributors, that we can we can tell about that time in bed. That okay, how how quickly you fall asleep, and also how much you get uh, certain uh, certain sleep states, and also what is the overall pattern uh, of your sleep. So normally, when when the circadian alignment is is right, and you you have consistent bedtimes and so on. Then we we see most of the deep sleep coming in the first half of the night, and then REM more most of the REM sleep comes on the second part of the night, and and depending on on your chronotype, whether you are morning person or evening person, then especially for morning persons like myself, uh, these morning hours are that let's say the sleep is lighter. You get most of the REM sleep, but you also wake up easily at that time. And, and um, because also your your um, kind of stress hormones starts to, to pick up and, and starts to wake wake you up, so all these these are kind of interlinked into this. I would describe twenty four seven hormonal cycle or hormonal cycles that are happening in our body. So so this hypnogram kind of tries to describe that whether you wear. Whether your body was in in right state to sleep well and, and get restorative sleep in this time window that you you were in bed, and and um, also referring to this intrinsic memory that how consistently you go to sleep at the same time and wake up at the same time, so how the patterns change, uh, and also like in this today's. Um, world uh, many people suffer of this social jet lag so that they go to sleep uh, later during the weekends and also wake up later during the weekends and and we have actually uh, shown through our studies and, and research papers and articles that after two and a half years of collecting our data with tens of thousands of users we can show that it has huge effect actually but how consistent your bedtimes are, are. And for those social jet lackers, that their, for example, resting heart rate, it never drops to the same level, level uh, during the weekdays than for those who, who don't suffer of this social jet lag. So well, let, me, let me just make sure that's really clear then. And that is, yeah. you call this social jet lag. You haven't crossed yeah. any time zones, but you've imparted on your physiology this stress of suddenly going to sleep at a certain time uh, for five days a week, and then on the weekends you disturb the system. It's as if you took a, a trip for the, in yes. two or three hour different times. Exactly. Yes. And that, uh, you're seeing some effects, from, and I think you said in terms yes. of heart rate. Yes, exactly. Even, even the resting heart rate. So, so the aura shows the lowest resting heart rate, what you get during the night. So for those who are kind of social jet lackers, um, we can see from the data that their resting heart rate curves over the weekdays, then uh, kind of they, they start to go down from the weekend, but they never reach the level as for those who live more consistent life. So, so it means that in practice, you're not challenging yeah, so, yourself, then you have a, a lower uh, heart rate uh, when, when you're sleeping. I think that I'm, yes. I sent you uh, an image of my heart rate. Let's take a look yes. at that. Yes, yes. Yes, there is the picture of, of your heart rate over the night, and it seems that about 4 a.m. you have reached lo the lowest uh, value, which is very meaningful. So 43 at that night uh, at 4 a.m., and you wake woke up about 7, 7.26. So, so you had good time to kind of recharge your batteries uh, at that night, because that moment when, you, when your body reaches the lowest resting heart rate, the, the rest of the hours that you sleep, it's really like recharging your batteries. So for those people who reach their lowest resting heart rate just before they wake up, they basically lose all that kind of a possibility 
to recharge, recharge their batteries during the night. So the most optimal, actually in our website, there are articles that describe that what kind of models of your resting heart rate during the night, uh, what are the kind of most optimal for you to get restorative sleep. So even this lowest resting heart rate indication, it tells a lot about uh, the quality of our sleep and the restorativeness uh, especially. Some people say that um, that they are okay getting up early or, or they feel like they've slept enough. Uh, but, it, but in looking at these hypnograms and uh, just the, the general knowledge base, it looks like uh, we tend towards more and more REM sleep later in the night as opposed to the deep sleep happening earlier. Yes. So yes. if you do get up really early to be productive, you're compromising that really important time for, for REM sleep, one would think. Yes. Why is it? Uh, why is REM sleep looked upon as being so valuable? Yeah, you mentioned earlier this Alzheimer's disease, and 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 it seems that not only the the deep sleep but also REM sleep contribute to this lymphatic circulation, and and from a kind of mental recovery perspective, REM sleep is really important. And what we've seen through our data that for those people who have lots of lots of kind of mental load from their work or, or whatever is causing that, they seem to need more REM sleep. And, and, and therefore, if, if you always kind of shorten your night, then you lose this chance to, to cleanse your, uh, your brain and, and, and kind of recover from this mental load, the, and, and which, which is the basis for the clarity, mental clarity during the day as well. So, so we wouldn't encourage people to kind of shorten then their sleep, because it's it's. Um, I would say that it's so important to understand your own uh, chronotype. So whether you are a morning person or evening person or intermediate, like Dr. Breus, Breus is is talking about this uh, lion or or wolf or dolphin and so on. So we can describe them in different ways, but anyway, there is there is biology behind so that. This, our internal clock is in the body level, it's in the cell level, it's in the organ level. And, and we should appreciate that um, and kind of understand uh, what, are, what is optimal for us because it has huge effect on our hormonal balance and, and the sleep quality and the restorativeness of sleep. You, you talk about uh, the chronotypes and uh, whether we're a morning person or a night person. And I wonder, is there any data you can use from what's put out by your aura ring to determine what you are? Yes, actually, uh, about a year at least, we have, we have provided so-called optimal bedtime calculation to our users. And, and when we released that, uh, in the beginning, uh, maybe one-tenth or, or 15% of the users got uh, this optimal bedtime subsystem the others got just a recommendation and the the reason for that was that those who couldn't get the optimal bedtime subsystem didn't live consistent enough life to to be able to calculate that what's what's your optimal but then what happened in just few months was that then already more than 50 percent of our users started to get optimal bedtime uh, subsystem recommendations so so it in practice practice it meant that they followed the guidance by the app to to build more consistency in their life and eventually they started getting this optimal bedtime calculation so so one big reason for us collecting this this um, let's say very rich data uh, from all our users is to use it for this personalization personalized guidance to help each individual uh, to find what is optimal for them. Because there is no such generalized guidance that could be given. Um, uh, there are some, we, we of course try in, in, in uh, let's say, National Sleep Foundation is willing to give some guidance that, okay, what, what, how, what we can tell as recommendations for people about sleep. And basically the only one is that Adults should sleep about seven to nine hours every night. But then already in the next sentence, they say that there are people that survive well with less and those who need more. 
So, <laughs> so uh, we thought that it's it's best to to see each one of us as unique individuals, and then have a system that reflects back uh, in your context that how your body is telling about this. Well, I think it's good to also look at uh, epidemiologic information. Uh, and uh, like with so many other parameters, we see that with sleep, there is what we call the U-shaped curve. Uh, yes. In terms of Alzheimer's risk, for example, under seven yeah. hours a night in general is associated with increased risk. But yes. interestingly, greater than nine hours is also associated with increased risk of Alzheimer's. Yes. Now, what yes. we don't know, and I think it's really a, a very important question, is, is cause or effect. Mm -hmm. uh, is Alzheimer's or other are other neurodegenerative conditions uh, early on affecting uh, sleep regulatory centers in the brain, mm -hmm. or is the fact that we ultimately develop a disease, a neurodegenerative condition, a manifestation of not just our sleep issues, but uh, mm -hmm. other lifestyle choices conspiring yes. to ultimately manifest that disease. So very interesting. So yeah. uh, we didn't touch upon, and I'd like to in the time we have uh, left, uh, what what are you learning about in terms of daytime activity? Yeah, so we, um, from the very beginning, beginning, we have kind of tried to form a picture of 24-7 view to our life uh, and, and helping people to understand this balance between rest and load. So, so we took it as, as our first um, step to, to build a, as holistic a picture as possible to this, uh, that how much rest you get during 24-7, uh, kind of 24 hours. So first part of that, of course, is getting sleep. But then, then we do certain actions during the day as well, like meditation or taking naps or, or even walking outside in nature. That kind of restorative moments uh, exist in our day daytime as well, and and um, we are passionate to to build this kind of more holistic picture to our users. That okay, what kind of moments uh, during the day would help you to to build more consistent kind of a lifestyle that would help you to build this balance between load and rest, and and. Um, I can show you one one example. We have this so-called moment feature in our app that we released uh, about half a year ago, and 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 with that one you can do also measurement during the day. Uh, so so in this one I can send you the screenshot later on. But this is a twenty-minute session presence uh, session uh, for me. It shows my heart rate during during that session. Also, it shows my HRV uh, figure during that session. And also, um, the, the commercial app doesn't show this yet, but it also shows the peripheral uh, temperature change during that 20-minute session. So, so, so we try to help people to kind of understand that uh, how these daytime moments that you select yourself, how they help you improve your sleep and restorativeness of your sleep. Uh, because we have done early findings that, for example, doing relaxation exercise or meditation a uh, certain time of the day, it has huge effect on on how your your sleep quality kind of improves, how, how restorative sleep you get. But are um, you able to uh, look at, for example, changes in heart rate variability acutely? During an exposure to nature, during meditation, I mean, is that data that you're able to harvest? Yeah, that's that's exactly. We are going to that that direction that we want to want to, let's say, build uh, this kind of coherent view to those biosignals that we get that what they tell about that how your body is responding to these these moments and also also how they build you, how how they help you to build. Uh, kind of habits that help you improve your, your sleep overall. Um, so there are multiple different kind of findings. And first, we have concentrated to the, let's say, uh, three, four hours before you go to sleep. Because, for example, the meal time and the meal timing and the, the amount of 
uh, food that you eat and the quality, of course, affect um, your sleep quality. So if you eat too late, too much, or, or the kind of quality that your metabolism system doesn't handle well at that time of the day, then it has huge effect on, on your sleep quality. Uh, so you mentioned about these causal relationships. That is what we want to bring, bring up and, and bring visible to, to users so that they would get this feedback loop uh, to understand that, okay, how this action, how this choice, how it helped me. You know, we live in a in the information age, and it can be, uh, for many people, uh, overwhelming. You know, we talk now about orthorexia, where people are just, just over the top concerned about their food. Uh, and, you know, there, it's good to have a level of understanding, which translates from a level of concern and then becomes implementation. And some people might, uh, you know, not want to get so engaged with technology, for example, uh, because it's just too much information. But and I would say that that might describe me to some degree. Uh, I, I have been really comfortable with the information I'm getting from uh, from your technology, from mm. the Aura Ring, because, uh, again, it gets back to the immediate uh, understanding of, uh, through feedback, what my lifestyle choices are doing. Uh, yeah, it's good to know what we should be eating moment to moment, whether that's based on analysis of my microbiome and its interplay mm. with my genome, uh, mm. how that relates to my chronotype, etc. Mm. And that can be very overwhelming when you couple yes. this with other levels of, te- of of understanding via technology. Yes. But I've been very, very um, satisfied with uh, with this technology. It's really been helpful for me, uh, if for no other reason at this stage of the game. That it has really, um, really doubled down on my understanding of the value of restorative sleep, and I think that's mm-hmm. a really important concept because it isn't just the length of sleep, the mm-hmm. time you are in bed, but it's what's happening when your eyes are closed and you go into sleep. What are the parameters that are unique to you, and then what are your daytime lifestyle choices, and how do they influence the the level of restoration that you get during that activity. So uh, the other thing I'm really impressed by is how dynamic your technology is. When you now are describing to all of our viewers what's in the works and what the mm. future looks like. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's really, I think, exciting that we can, uh, we can participate in that moving forward and really look forward to these uh, you know, advances in your technology that are going to be made available to us. I am particularly looking forward to what we just talked about, and that is gaining almost a moment-to-moment or hour-by-hour, probably more meaningful, understanding of things like my heart rate variability as they (laughs) relate to my day-to-day experiences, especially uh, nature exposure and meditation. Uh, We have a new book called Brainwash, Mm. and those two choices are really uh, explored in great depth because I think people are just not participating in those activities uh, as much as they could. And mm. they are powerful. I, you know, they're, they're yes. right up there with sleep. Uh, yes. Perhaps not as powerful as sleep, but they are mm. powerful nonetheless in allowing us to reduce those mechanisms like inflammation that are yes. so uh, fundamental yes. in terms of these chronic degenerative conditions. And that circles back to our original time together today. Mm. So yes. we will look forward to hearing more from you as this develops. I think we should uh, agree that uh, every six months or every year we'll touch bases. Hopefully uh, when we do, we'll be able to share it with our audience in terms of what's what's going on with you and what's going on with, with Oring because it's, it's really very exciting. Yes, I would be happy to, definitely. There's so much that we can share also finding out from, from people. We have customers in more than 100 countries. So how, how we are similar, how we are different <laughs> also, and also how we can see this kind of even seasonal effects uh, and, and different kind of rhythms, how the different rhythms affect us as human beings. Absolutely. Um, Pateri, where can people go to learn more about what you're doing? So our website is Aura ring.com, O-U-R-A ring.com. 
So there, there we have several articles and, and blog posts related to all these things what we discussed about. And tell me the genesis of the name Aura Ring. Aura is is uh, it, it means kind of old uh, Finnish Swedish language, uh, and it it's it describes a bedrock. So so we we wanted to develop a bedrock for people so that they have a good basis for their life on which they can build on. Well, I think that bedrock is information. Uh, yes, know, it I, is. At the yes. end of the day and at the beginning of the day. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time and uh, congratulations on your success and all that you're doing. And uh, I meant what I said. We got to touch bases again real soon. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I'll be okay. happy. Talk to you thank soon. You Bye much. for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, what an interesting uh, gentleman uh, he is. And in fact, uh, what an interesting uh, experience it, is, it has been for us uh, participating uh, uh, in the use of the Aura Ring, learning about ourselves, and most importantly for us anyway, learning about uh, how well and how long we sleep. Uh, sleep has been underrated in terms of how important it is for health and longevity and disease resistance. Uh, so many factors are now uh, really evident that we've underrated the value of sleep, so really important to learn as much as you can about uh, what's going on with your sleep. Well, thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. David Promoter. We'll be back soon. Bye for now.